little bit about um, <coughs> the chemistry of uh, glucose and how the way that glucose is joined together uh, by the enzymes that make <coughs> cellulose lead to the structure that we have in, in cellulose. Uh, the glucose molecule is in three dimensions, has this kind of shape to it. So we have one oxygen within this six-membered ring, and then pointing out sideways, we have hydroxyl groups there, and then we have a carbon and a hydroxyl group there. So these are the two hydroxyl groups that are responsible for bonding in the cellulose chain. I'll mark those ones. Uh, and we do a numbering which starts at this position just by convention. So if we call that one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have six carbon atoms. So six equals a hexose. We can also have rings that are formed which have five carbon atoms. They don't have this branch here, and that would be called a pentose. I'll say something about pentoses later on. Um, so these are the two bonding positions that make um, cellulose. We also have hydrogens. I'm not going to draw them in because it's complicated enough, but these adopt these vertical positions here. So there's a hydrogen pointing down there. No, it's pointing up, my mistake. There's a hydrogen there, a hydrogen there, one there, and one there, but I won't draw them in because it'd be too complicated. So these are all pointing out sideways. So these three-dimensional configurations of where these hydroxyl groups sit is very important. And this carbon atom here is referred to as the anomeric carbon. And when this ring is formed, this six-membered ring, it can actually form with this hydroxyl group in one of two positions. All the other ones are fixed by nature. But this one, depending on the process that forms this ring, because it's formed by an enzyme, and the enzyme will determine the three-dimensional structure of the glucose in this case, we could form a structure which is completely identical. It's still a glucose molecule. I shall draw this as quickly as possible. So we still have all these equatorial hydroxyl groups pointing out here. I'll explain the term equatorial in a minute. But now, that hydroxyl is in that position. So either of those two forms are possible. So this is one form of glucose, this is another form of glucose. Now, we only get in nature one particular form of a molecule. We're talking about a property here called chirality. And the word chiral comes from the Greek word for hand. So it's about handedness. We can have a left hand form and a right hand form of molecules. And it so happens that these forms here are just by convention referred to as left handed forms. And they have a label D glucose. So these are D forms of glucose. So far, so good. The other form would be referred to as L-glucose. We don't get that in nature. It doesn't exist. So if we want that, we have to make it. Most sugars have this D configuration, and this is just something to do with it, the way it rotates polarised light. It's not something we need to concern ourselves about. What we're concerned about is what's happening here at this anomeric carbon centre. Now, this form here is given the name beta D glucose and this form is called alpha D glucose. 
and we only get the beta form in cellulose. We don't get the alpha form. The alpha form you get in starch. Okay, 